We have Ivan Mayrina of GMA7. Mr. President, good afternoon. I'm good Ivan afternoon. Mayrina. I represent GMA Integrated News. Before Hello. I proceed to my two questions, I'd like to ask a follow-up question <laughs> from, from uh, Cheryl's question uh, earlier about the latest incident in Ayungin Shoal. Uh, Mr. President, how do you intend to resolve the seeming disconnect between what gets agreed upon at your level, at the top level, and what gets implemented out at sea? Yeah. I know you said there is no compromise yet, but in the meantime, our fishermen are being prevented from engaging in their livelihood. Well, I think the actions that, uh, that, are, ne that are needed are really from the Chinese side. Uh, and that is because we, we, we do not send fish, uh, uh, Coast Guard boats into what we consider their waters or international waters. They stay within Philippine waters. And so that uh, hopefully, as I said, the reason that it was important for me, uh, let, let me clarify what we talked about with, the, with President Xi. And it was very simple. I said we have to raise the level of discourse between the Philippines and China. Now, we already have a bilateral group that's working on issues about the, the South China Sea. Now, my proposal is that we, inc we, ha we bring that bilateral group to a higher level. It's a sub-ministerial level now. So well, let's bring it to a ministerial level. And I will ask my foreign secretary to be part of it. I will ask my ambassador to China to be part of it. And I guarantee you that if there is any decision that needs to be made, either of those gentlemen can pick up the telephone and talk to me. And within five minutes, we will have a decision. I hope that China can do the same. And that is what, that is what uh, the President Xi was agreeable. And he said, why not? So he assigned his foreign minister uh, to, uh, to take care of the details. That's what we're working on now. Now, uh, with the power structure in, 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 in uh, the People's Republic, uh, I think that if uh, the President, President Xi, uh, puts out an order that we will, we will not do that anymore, we will do something else, then I think it will be, I think the, it, I think the chain of command is fairly solid. That, uh, uh, because again, we will, have the, we will be able to report any violations of whatever agreement we come to. Pagalawa na, uh, unang tanong ko pala. <laughs> Kamakailan po naglabas ng video si First Lady Lisa? Tungkol sa, naglabas siya ng warning sa mga taong gumagamit daw ng kanyang pangalan para ma-appoint. Apparently it had something to do with appointment sa TAFP. At sinabi niya, pag ginawa niyo yan, sasabihin ko sa asawa ko, huwag kayong i-appoint. My question, Mr. President, is how involved is the First Lady in your decisions with regard to appointments and in your governance in general? Zero. Uh, she really has no, she really has no input on that. The, the, my, the first lady helps me in terms of re, the organization because she's actually very, very good at that. Organizing which uh, office, how the office, how the workflow goes, where the documents go through. She's well, she's a well-trained lawyer, so she's very good at that. And uh, so, but that's that's the extent of it. We don't talk about. Uh, we don't talk policy together. I mean, she'll, she'll comment. Mm -hmm. She generally say that you know uh, that looks good, that doesn't look good. I don't know why you're doing that. Uh, that's fine. That's what a great idea. But that's it. Uh, Do you consult her in difficult decisions? Not political. <laughs> not political decision. Legal. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the legal. I will ask her. I will ask. I will ask. Whenever there's a legal question, I'm not a lawyer, so I need an expert uh, opinion. She's right next to me most of the time, so I can turn to her. I can turn to, I am very lucky, actually, I, I, I think I have the best legal representation of uh, any president. I have a former chief justice as my uh, executive secretary. I have uh, JPE, who is uh, working as a legal advisor to the president. And between, uh, between all of these experts and luminary, legal luminaries, uh, that's when, that's the only time that, uh, 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 that, that the discussion inc may include Lisa. But she's not, she doesn't come to the office and sit with us at all. Mm -hmm. If I have something to ask, it's usually definitions. Mm -hmm. 
define to me what is the legal what is the legal definition of this what is the legal definition of that when they talk about this what they, what do they mean what's the legal concept behind that it's usually that's the kind of question because she's a teacher mm -hmm. so that's the kind of question i ask her last question sir okay. madalas rin pong isama si congressman sandro sa inyong mga biyahe at sa inyong mga engagements the question is is the congressman being groomed as the next marcos president sandro <laughs> Uh, no, he's not being, it's, we're not. To possibly refine or operationalize this doctrine, um, does your administration see any opportunity in, for example, deepening engagement with the non-aligned movement, especially now that superpower rivalry, especially in our zone, is, you know, might be intensifying um, sometime in the future. Well, th that was very much in response to the Cold War and the, the slow, uh, the slow dismantling of the, uh, the mm, organs of the Cold War. If that's what you want. I, that's how you want to put it. Uh, and that is why the that that non-aligned treaty was created uh, between several nations who said that we no longer, we no longer subscribe to the notion that we as a country must choose one to side with one uh, superpower or another. And that is precisely what we have undertaken. And that is exactly the, uh, the position that uh, uh, I have, that I have uh, taken in terms of foreign policy. Uh, although, you know, I, it came up, this came up again in our discussions in the conference, is uh, the question that was asked was uh, very, very actually thought-provoking. Uh, will, will geopolitics finally kill globalization? Because geopolitics is pulling people apart and all these aggregations are being pulled apart. And uh, the general conclusion is that, that the people, that countries realize that uh, alliances are important, are in fact, they're more than important, they're necessary. Nonetheless, these, are, these alliances do not mean that we are, uh, again, in, within the sphere of influence of any great power. As a matter of fact, uh, in ASEAN, we all came to the agreement that at the very least, in ASEAN, in the Asia Pacific region, the future of the region must be decided by those in the region, not by some outside power. And so I think the idea, I do not know of the formal, the, I, I do not know of any formal uh, meetings or conferences of the non-aligned nations. They used to have them. They don't have them very much anymore. Uh, I don't know about that, but very, we are very much in the spirit of that treaty. We are very much part of it in the sense that we continue to uh, walk that very fine line between two great superpowers who are uh, surrounding us both physically and geopolitically. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you so much, Sass of Sass Raganda Sansot of